So it's been a while. Um, honestly, I'm just going to front load with this with this is almost certainly my last cancer vlog. Um, I'm fucking sick of it. I'm sick of it. A uh, hell of a lot has gone on since my last vlog. Um, and I'm, I'm really tired and I've tried to sit down in front of a camera or have a bit of fun, like recording B-roll and out and about getting my cancer stuff done and I'm just, I just don't have the energy for it anymore. Um... I'll give you all a brief rundown because I don't want to just leave you in the lurch because that's so unsatisfying narratively. Um, so as you can see, I'm still alive. Unless you're watching this in a hundred years or or ten if I'm incredibly unlucky. <laughs> Fuck me. Um, so last I left off, i just gone to get my hair cut. And as you can see... I don't have hair anymore. Um, I cut it all off because uh, my second cycle of EC, which was around my four to five week mark, I just, my hair started coming out in clumps. So I shaved, uh, I, had, I went and had it cut properly because I thought I'd feel nice. Um, and then it was less than a week after that, it was just coming out. So I was like, fuck it, mohawk. So I had a mohawk for a while, for like three days. And then every time I styled it, more hair just came out in clumps, which I didn't think would affect me as viciously as it did, but it did. So um, I just went full shave my head, grade one, fuck it all. Uh, now I have lost a lot of hair. Um, I've lost hair. My, my eyebrows. Borderline just painted on at this point. Um, my eyelashes. You know when you get sleep in your eyelash and you kind of pull it out? I'm just pulling clumps of eyelashes out now. Um, which really... Whew, doesn't do much for, uh, for the self-image there. Other aspects of my treatment like um, Zolodex which is uh, a drug I should have been on to suppress my ovaries. Now, I've talked about my fertility before and how, biologically speaking, I don't plan to have children myself. Um, that doesn't mean, however, I want to be chemically sterilized. Now, this is where my doctor decided to fucking ignore me and just let me chemically sterilize myself because they couldn't be bothered to uh, assert the basic level of fucking care. So, very quick recap. Four cycles of EC, which is the big nasty fuck you chemo that you go through prelim preliminarily. Is that even a word? It probably is. Um, so, each four cycle is three weeks, because that is about as much as your body can stand, because... Chemotherapy kills you just a little bit slower than cancer does to kill cancer. It rapidly it, it attacks rapidly growing cells, hair, gut flora, nails, ovary stuff. You know, I don't know exactly what because I am a tocophobic, which is a person who's afraid of carrying a baby and not not physically. I mean, I will, but like. <laughs> So, someone who is ter who has a phobia of being pregnant, basically. So that that kind of stuff is quite triggering for me. So I just tend to ignore it. Um, but regardless, it's like, well, maybe I, I thought maybe in five, ten years, fucking whatever. Maybe that's something I want to do one day. I don't want to rule it out. You know, I I certainly don't want cancer to rule it out for me. Fuck cancer. <laughs> So I opted for this Zop uh, Zo uh, Zolodex, which puts your ovaries to sleep, which means that the damage is minimal. Now, I'm certain I've always had fertility problems. I've always felt in myself that I am less than fertile. 
I am now, seeing as I'm over the age of 14, according to some psycho fucking pass on the internet. But I'm not going to get into that, even though that's another reason I've not been doing a lot of stuff, is just to brush over it. No one has personally targeted me for not getting pregnant at 14. Um, not since my own father. Um, that's a fun story. Um... But no, just the, everything in the world is so miserable, it's actively ruining my life so much more. Um, which I appreciate is not entirely the world's fault. I know that I, there is a level of disconnection I, I, I need to have, but I digress. <clears throat> so these injections, um, I asked twice at the beginning of my treatment, my first and second cycles of EC. I was like, so, um, this Zolodex stuff that's supposed to, like, not just destroy my ovaries and, and, like, give me early onset menopause, which don't really fancy that, actually. Um, that, I'm getting that. And they were like, oh, yeah, you are. You are. Multiple nurses and doctors told me multiple times that, yes, that's what I was getting. Fuck off was I getting that. Fourth cycle of EC. I get this fucking this size, the size of this pen nib injection in my fucking stomach. And I'm like, so what's this? And they're like, oh, this is so that your ovaries don't die. And I'm like, I, that this is the first I've had it. Do they put it in my chemo juice? And they were like, no, no, this is the only way you can receive it. And I was just like, I don't know how I didn't break down then, but I didn't. Very proud of myself. <clears throat> so I was like, okay, this is a fucking problem, especially because I've just gone through the nastiest chemo, which will do the, the, the most severe damage to my body. So, how do I make a long, long story, a long, long story, the, the, the short version is already pretty long, even shorter. Uh, basically, my doctors, which yes, I know I need to change, and I'm just going to preface it here. I, I know I have been neglected medically, um, and it sucks, but um, there's not much I can really do about it. I went to see my oncologist, and she asked me, so, oh, you've been having the, uh, the Zolodex? And I'm like, I had one, and she immediately flew into a fucking panic. And she was like, oh, oh, that, that shouldn't be. And I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> Thanks. And I told her about how, <clears throat> so, okay. The way this is supposed to go, which nobody fucking told me. And I know because I've had my fucking husband there the whole time with all of my oncologist appointments, apart from like a couple that have just been examinations. But when it's been about the process of my treatment, Matt has been there. And he listens a damn sight better than I do. He's never heard of this shit. He's never heard them tell me this. That I apparently needed to order in these suppressant fucking syringes myself, organize a doctor's appointment myself every, every three weeks to get this injected personally. Go there, get injected, then go get chemotherapy. And the hospital line and the, the general practitioner line never cross because that's exactly what you want with someone having cancer is the right arm not knowing what the fuck the left arm is doing. Or even if it's the left leg, who knows, right? Who gives a shit? It's just people with cancer who fucking cares, right? So that was what was supposed to be happening. Nobody told me. And for some reason, I just got my, my, my last injection administered at the hospital post-chemo. For, like, like, for no reason. This, this was just that. Now, I, I renew my prescriptions online, and it gives you a list of all the medications that you have that you can request to be sent out to the pharmacist so you can go pick them up. Now... The brand name for uh, Zolodex, it starts with a G, I can't fucking remember it, it's not important. Um, just wasn't there until a week after I'd had that fucking, the first 
a Zolodex injection. So yeah, um, my doctors not only don't believe ADHD exists, they barely believe that mental health problems exist. Um, they, like the rest of the UK, don't give a fucking damn about trans people. I'm non-binary, that's under the trans umbrella. Um, <laughs> um, and yeah, and uh, before anyone says anything, this is the Tory government, this is capitalism, um, killing people and sterilizing them. Hi, partially chemically sterilized here. How you doing? Um, <laughs> so there's that. That's a lot of fun. Um, just broke down today when I was having my uh, my bloods drawn because I've moved on to Praclitaxel, Pratlitax. I can't remember. I will put it up on screen like a delicious chemo sandwich. What do you want from me? It's fucking six a.m. Uh, which is a weekly cycle, which is every Tuesday I have to go in and get pumped full of chemicals. See, this is this is the part that I hate because I'm I'm very tired with all this. Shock horror, having cancer is hard. <laughs> um, it's just, it's, it's a little embarrassing, which I know it shouldn't be. This is my own brain, my goblin brain being an idiot. I went in today because I have an oncology phone call on Monday, today is Friday. Um... And I was supposed to get my my stomach injection at my doctor's. I was trying so hard to get it done how they wanted me to. Um, but the thing is, with the EDU, um, the place where I get all my treatments from, and have my bloods drawn, and have my bandage changed for my pick line, you can't make specific appointments. You get what you are given, because they are so fucking at capacity. And it's like... Sure, let's give that a go. <clears throat> and the earliest appointment they gave me today, or well, yesterday, was 1 p.m. And it was pretty empty, and I was like, oh, this is good, because usually there's like anywhere between an hour and five hour waiting time. Which is awesome, by the way. Um, especially hearing people's fucking drips run out. If I have to hear that fucking triple beep, I get, which I will for the next fucking, like, four months. Whatever. Um, and I was like, look, I... It, it got to half fucking two, and I still hadn't been seen, and my doctor's appointment was, was at 2.40. And I was having a fucking panic attack. I was freaking out. I'm like, look, I can't... I can't I, I need my camera to focus, which honestly at the time confused them, and rightly it should have. <clears throat> and I was like, look, I need, I, I, I know you guys can't just rush me in, but can you give me my injection while I'm here? And they were like, we have no record of this fucking prescription on, on your file, which is, yeah, you do, but well, how the fuck did I get it last time, but. Honestly, they they came to, they, they were great, they did their best, and I did manage to get it through a fuckload of messing around. Like, you, you don't know just how much, that was just, I, I had to fucking sit there in the waiting room, being the youngest there, with the BBC News fucking playing, talking about how, oh... Prince William and fucking Prince Harry. Who gives a fuck? Hang the monarchy. They are a fucking plague. Like, not individually. Just get rid of monarchies. They're bullshit. They fuck me off. And there's this, all this fucking other shit that's miserable on there. And they're talking about, you know, people are identifying as trans and gay on the census now. 
And then wedding room full of boomers have so many fun opinions about that. If you ain't like LGBT or anything, if you aren't part of a minority, just just listen when... <laughs> Imagine when you hear your, your fucking uncle or someone be like, yeah, I mean, like, it's just a bit freaky, isn't it? Someone wanting to be called a different name. Bit disgusting, isn't it? Listen to that and pretend it's about you. Listen list, listen to a room full of people talk about like you like, like you're a fucking psychopath. Like just waiting to just leap on their children and eat them alive when you're literally just fucking there to be seen because you have cancer. And I, I get off relatively easy because I'm really, I, I'm pretty cis passing. So yeah, um, I had to have an hour and a half of that, which was honestly so much less than so many other trans people have to deal with, but I digress. And, and I got sent in and there was a guy in the opposite bay who was about my age, who was going through EC. And he was just, he spent 15 minutes describing in the most disgusting and visceral manner how he was going to throw up. Uh, I'm not going to repeat what he said, because it was fucking disgusting. Um, and he just kept going on about it. And I'm just like, okay, why does everyone else in the room have to suffer? <laughs> No, that's mean. Like, I, I get just feeling so fucking alone and just, just, just needing to complain and speaking and nothing making you feel better. <laughs> Hence why I don't want to be doing these anymore because they're not helping. And <clears throat> they were running around desperately trying to see if they could give me this Zolodex injection. And like, and one of the nurses was like, look, well, how does, how does she fucking have it? If she doesn't have a prescription, this is ridiculous. And I'm like, thank you for logicking this out. And, you know, they put the curtains around me and everything. And the nurse who um, took my blood um, gave the injection, uh, which is a, as far as I'm aware, it's a subcutaneous injection, which is in like the, the fat of the stomach or the upper thighs. They always go for the stomach on this one, at least with me, the two times I've had it. In the very brief research I've done, like, I don't know, months ago, or fucking whenever. Um, and it was one of the most painful fucking things I've gone through in, like, a decade. I have a very high pain threshold. You kind of have to, if, you know, you're into mod modifications or anything like that, or just living in England, and honestly... I was fucking shaking. It was agony. I started fucking crying. <sighs> Which might be shocking to you seeing as I never cry. Um, it, it just hurts so fucking much. And I, I, I was begging her to stop. I was like, please tell me it's nearly over. And, um, when it was, I just fucking lost it. I just broke down. Um, a bit like how I am now, which is really frustrating because I'm trying to fucking speak to you all. Um, yeah. She was really nice about it. Um, and I was like, I'm so sorry. It didn't hurt that much. I mean, it did, but it stopped hurting that much. And she was like, well, as long as it's not still hurting, because that's a serious fucking problem. And I was like, no, it's fine. Um, and I was like, it's just been a fucking day. And that poor overworked woman had to listen to me complain for like 15 minutes as I just fucking sobbed on her. Um. She 
she was really nice about it. She was really nice. Um, I bled a lot. Uh, and it hurt a lot. And I just, I just told her how I'm just... I'm really tired. And... I don't know, I'm just... I'm worn down. And it's just one thing after another, and it's like... I'm not getting better from things before more things are happening to me. And that just... I don't have the energy for it. It's... Christmas was hard. Christmas is always hard for me. Um, I'm... I know it'll be hard for other people and I'm I you know have it better than most than a lot of people when it comes to family at least um I don't have parents um i um I don't really directly talk about it very often um but I had to stop talking to them because they were psychos they were psychopathically abusive people. Physically, mentally, in every way you can imagine. They abused me. And they abused my brother. So, six years ago, I stopped talking to them. I cut them out of my life. I cut all contact with them. I quit smoking so that they couldn't hold that over me. And I moved. To get the fuck away from them. And Christmas was always a a very difficult time. Um, it was always a very dramatic time. Um, so I have this inbuilt kind of hatred of Christmas. Because it was always a month of just hell. In an already very deeply fucked household. Um... So that, that's difficult. Um, the other difficult thing is I do really wish I did have parents. Um, not the ones that had me. They're not parents. They wouldn't have parents. Um, but my my um my in-laws are really great. I love them a lot, but... It sounds so ungrateful, but... They aren't my actual parents, you know? And I just, I just... This Christmas has really highlighted just how alone that made me feel. How, um... My brother and I just... more me than my brother because my brother is is great I love my brother a lot um but like just feeling like so alone with with having cancer also over Christmas I got COVID um and got made fun of recklessly online, on Reddit, for just being like, yeah, it'd be nice if more people wore masks. Because uh, COVID can just fucking kill me. It can just kill me. Fucking the common cold can just kill me now because my immune system is so fucking broken. Um, which is apparently hilarious and I'm choosing to live in fear. Um, which, wow. That's awkward, saying that, like, out loud where other people can see it, but sure. <clears throat> Just after I got COVID, thankfully Matt didn't get it. Um, <clears throat> he got the other virus that was going around, which I'm still kind of fighting off. My throat's still sore, my voice is still fucked. Haven't been able to see any friends 
uh, that much. And when I have been able to see them, I've been really unwell. I've just been feeling like death. And everyone has kids now and I love them. And they are so noisy. <laughs> and I get it, I am too. But I'm not really sleeping. I can't taste things. Everything is horrible. And all I want to do is cry all the time. Even when I don't want to cry all the time. That's all I'm really doing. So emotionally, it's a bit excessive. Way I figure it, I've got about 11 more chemo sessions to go. And then, if all goes well, whatever the fuck that means, um, I will be having surgery to remove the tissue, the cancer, in April. Which means, just as I'm coming off my praclitaxel, Mandalorian Season 3 is going to be out. I want to preface this with... I'm not there. And if I do get there... I'm going to I'm gonna get help. So please don't worry about me or my safety. But... It's been really hard to stay alive. <laughs> Um, uh, I am, I don't want to be a full on pity party here, but I'm not exactly had the easiest go of it. Um, and I'm just, so much of my life has just been fighting to just not even thrive, just barely fucking survive. The past four years in this house have been the best years of my life. Um, moving away from that small fucking town, that, that choking racist little fucking town away from those fucking people and actually being able to have a life I remember when I got my first gym membership I cried because I never thought I'd have something that nice Um, um, and then I get, I get hit with cancer, which I am seeing a therapist about. Macmillan are incredible. They've, they're paying for like six sessions of private therapy. Which is great, because they actually get paid enough and valued to listen, so... So that's really cool. Um, but... It's... it's difficult. Um, the thing with cancer and me is... It's taken so much away from me that is me. Like, I don't have any hair. Um, I can't exercise. I have no outlet for physical aggression, which really does not sit right with me. Uh, it's, it's not good for me, so I, I can't really physically exercise. <laughs> I, can't, I can't go to the gym. No matter how many times a day they email me telling me they have all these great bargains. <laughs> because, um, in, in, you know, compromise. Because I'll just get sick and fucking die. I am constantly feeling it. Like, the best I can feel per day is, at, like, 50%. I can't, 
it's so hard. My body is wrong. I don't, I don't look like me anymore. I never really liked the way I looked. But I was at least... It was at least something I could ignore or go, well, I put effort in, so that makes it better. That makes me feel better about it. But now I just... It's hard to look at myself. Dysphoria and dysmorphia and just... My body is wrong. Cancer is just... Ravaging me. And it's exhausting. And... If I don't go through chemo, I die. The cancer kills me, it wins. <laughs> but the thought of going through chemo makes me want to die. It is so hard. It is so fucking hard. And I am so tired of finding it hard. And I, there's, there's a bell in there, in the ward, and there's a stone next to it on the wall. And what you do is when, when you're in the clear, when you're cancer free, you ring that bell. And the first time I went in there, I pointed at it and went, I'm going to ring that bell. And I can't, I can't see myself doing that. It's not like I'm sitting here going, I'm convinced I'm going to die. It's just I've been in the chemo fucking haze and this bullshit for so long that I cannot even imagine what it would be like to be in the clear. I'd love to be, but I just... I'm drowning. And it feels like even if I do make it out the other side of this, this hell, even if I manage it somehow <laughs> with all this fucking shit, all these horrible effects, is it worth the staggering amount of trauma I am going to be bringing in from this experience. I can barely function as is. You know, I, c I have, I have trouble watching new things with people that I admire because I'm not them and I don't matter. Like they do. <laughs> um. <laughs> fuck you want to know how bad it is. I've watched Triple Frontier twice in two days. And that's not even a good movie. <laughs> it's like Predator without the Predator. And Pedro Pascal and Oscar Isaac. <laughs> it's, it's a stupid comfort movie. I'm being hard on myself. I don't even know what I'm saying no more. I'm just... I'm just rambling miserably. But I'm trying to find things to keep me alive. Which I think is underlooked. So. <laughs> the Last of Us is coming out on the 16th of January. That's something to stay alive for. I want to see what my husband does with his Transformers videos. That's something to stay alive for. My nieces and nephews will wonder why I'm not there on birthdays. 
So that's another thing to stay alive for. <laughs> My friends want to play Star Wars D&D with me. That's something to stay alive for. <sighs> My parents will die one day. <laughs> I, I definitely have to stay alive for that. <laughs> I've got podcasts to do with friends. And I know that I need all this and I want all this so desperately. But it's just... I'm just shackled with this bone-deep, miserable exhaustion, you know? It's just so many little things. Food doesn't taste right. Everything makes you tired. I can't... I haven't been able to sleep on my left side in months. Because of my fucking pick line. I've not been sleeping right. Eating is difficult. I don't have the energy or the stamina to make healthy food. To go get healthy food. It's too much. And I'm just... <clears throat> I'm miserable. I am truly fucking miserable. But... I'm alive. And I guess one of my favorite sayings is, if you're going through hell, keep going. Because I could just stop and fucking die. And the fact that that's true is so fucked, dude. If I just stop chemo now, I'll die. Not straight away, but the cancer will kill me. And it's just... I'm just tired. I wish I could express myself further than just, I'm tired. But anyone who suffered from depression knows any mental health problems that just saying I'm tired says fucking everything and nothing at once. So I wanted to say thank you so much for watching my vlogs. Um, I'm sorry. I tried to keep up with the jovial kind of slice of life, lol, living with cancer, <laughs> kind of jokiness, because that's just the way I deal with things, but um, I don't have that in me at the moment. Um, and I don't know when I will again. Um, I might have some sporadic content if something really bad happens, which let's be honest. But the Tories, like, taking apart the NHS as much as they are. Yeah, I'm... Some thought bad probably gonna happen to me. Again. Or someone around me. Um. But for the moment, I'm just... Trying not to drown, trying to keep moving through hell, because if I stop, I die. It's literally that black and white. Keep going or die. So, <sighs> yeah. Thank you so much, everyone who's 
bought me stuff off my Amazon wish list or sent me little things in the mail as like a gift or just just left a like or left a comment and just sent me a DM and just been and just given me really sweet words which you might not think matters but it really does um even if I've not been able to reply properly and I don't think I have to anyone because people have been very open and personal with me about their their personal experiences with, with either their own diagnosis or a loved one or you know that kind of stuff and it's 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 overwhelming and <sighs> I fucking hate cancer so much It's, it's, it's so disgusting to me that something like that can exist that hurts so many fucking people. I hate it with every fiber of my cancerous being. <laughs> And I just want to thank you um, for watching and yeah, just the overwhelming amount of support and well wishes and everything and understanding that everyone has been pouring out over us is, I don't want to say humbling because people always do, don't they? But it has been and holy shit y'all um thank you it means everything um but yeah um thank you for watching um sorry it's probably not been very fun um, I'll try and put some silly things in the editing, like, oh, look, what's this? It's, I don't know, probably something from The Mandalorian. Probably Star Wars related, or maybe a Squishmallow. Who knows? It's kooky! <laughs> um, yeah, I wish I had more of an idea on how to finish this video, but... Please take care of yourselves. Um, Happy New Year. I really hope that it's better for everyone. Every single one of us. Because fucking hell, I think all of us have been to break. <laughs> um, so, I'm going to be here. Staying alive. Um, probably complaining a lot about it, but... I mean, lets you know you're alive, right? <laughs> um, yeah. But take care of yourself, everybody, okay? For me. <laughs>